States has always been, and still is, a British crown colony. King James I was famous not for just changing the Bible into the King James Version, but for signing the first Charter of Virginia in 1606. That charter granted America's British forefathers a license to settle and colonize America. The charter also guaranteed that future kings and queens of England would have sovereign authority over all the citizens and colonized land in America stolen from the Indians. After America declared its independence from Great Britain, the Treaty of 1783 was signed. That treaty specifically identifies the King of England as the Prince of the United States and contradicts the belief that America won the War of Independence. Although King George III of England gave up most of his claims over his American colonies, he kept his right to continue receiving payment for his business venture of colonizing America. If America had really won the War of Independence, they would never have agreed to pay debts and reparations to the King of England. When Congress passed the 13th Amendment to the Constitution, the U.S. President was made subservient to the King of England. The 13th Amendment is called the Title of Nobility Amendment and forbids U.S. Presidents and their officials from using royal titles like King or Prince or Baron. For some mysterious reason, the 13th Amendment, which was ratified in 1810, no longer appears on current copies of the Constitution. America's blood-soaked war of independence against the British bankrupted America and turned its citizens into permanent debt slaves of the king. In the War of 1812, the British torched and burned to the ground the White House and all U.S. government buildings and destroyed ratification records of the U.S. Constitution. One century later, a corrupt U.S. Congress committed the biggest theft in world history. They passed Paul Warburg's Federal Reserve Act in 1913, handing over America's gold and silver reserves and total control of America's economy to the Rothschild banksters. Most Americans still believe that the Fed or Federal Reserve is the government. It is not. The Fed is a privately owned banking system whose majority Class A shareholders are the Rothschilds, Warburgs, Kuhn and Loeb, J.P. Morgan, Rockefeller, Israel Seif, and the Lehman Brothers. This private banking cartel is the Fed and is never audited and never pays taxes. They print and design America's money, which displays their symbols of an Egyptian pyramid, a Masonic all-seeing eye, and the words, in God we trust. Who exactly is the God they trust? They also collect American taxpayers' money through the IRS. Then they loan it back again with interest to pay for roads, bridges, and other public works. American presidents are hand-picked and financed by these special interest power groups. Like George W. Bush, John Forbes Carey, whose initials are JFK, is a member of Yale University's Skull and Bones Brotherhood. The Forbes part of John Kerry's name identifies his descendancy from Captain Robert Bennett Forbes, who was a drug runner for the Rothschild's opium drug trade with China in the 1800s. Most U.S. citizens believe that the United States is a country and that the President is the most powerful man on earth. The United States is not a country. It is a corporation, and the President is President of the Corporation of the United States. He and his elected officials work for the corporation, not for the American people. Since the United States is a corporation, who owns the corporation of the United States? Like Canada and Australia, whose leaders are prime ministers of the Queen, and whose land is called Crown Land, the United States is just another Crown Colony. Crown Colonies are controlled by the empire of three city-states. At the center of each city-state is a towering, phallic-shaped stone monument called an obelisk that points skyward. In D.C. city-state, the obelisk, known as the Washington Monument, was dedicated to Freemason George Washington by the Freemason Grand Lodge of the District of Columbia. <laughs> 